Hello friends and beautiful people. This morning I'm bringing you uh, with me while I make our dressing for Thanksgiving dinner. There's a lot of different types. We're going to be making traditional dressing. Um, again, the difference between dressing and stuffing, this is not going to be cooked inside the bird. Um, there's a lot of studies out there that show that that's just not a, a safe thing to do. I'm not a fan of cornbread dressing. Uh, never have been. I'm sure I'll probably get hate mail over it. Um, even though I'm somewhat from, well, I'm from Appalachia, we've always made bread dressing. I have one aunt who makes it with crackers. It's okay, but I still prefer the bread dressing. So let me uh, show you what we're doing here. All right, and my iron skillet over here. Let me tilt you just a little bit. I have an entire stick of butter that I have just melted. Now I will tell you one of the things that I do is on Tuesday night, I chop up all of the veggies that I'm gonna need chopped up to make dinner with. So in this, I'm gonna add a whole onion. And by, by chopping up my vegetables on Tuesday night, it just gives me more family time, more time to uh, just take my time when I'm cooking on Thanksgiving morning. And actually, I got my butter just a little too brown, but that's okay. And then I'm going to do a whole um, stock, a big stock from the grocery store. Basically, it's one package of celery. This is the one thing we didn't grow this year. I grew the celery for seeds, and then I forgot to have any for eating. So this is store-bought, and you'll notice store-bought's just not quite as, as green and I don't think it has quite as much flavor as uh, regular. And what I'm gonna do is I am just going to saute this down until the onions and the celery are translucent. Now over here is, if you'll remember, I showed you the, the turkey neck. I did boil it down. There's a little bit of that stock in there and then I've got some bone broth that I made. Uh, from the last time I made turkey and I'm heating this up and there's a method to my madness and I will show you what that is so we've got our onion going we've got our celery going and we're heating up our um, bone stock bone broth then we're also going to use one egg that I've uh, scrambled up and our breadcrumbs now, I don't buy prepackaged bread crumbs. You, crumbs. you certainly can. Just make sure that you dry these out. Um, if you dry these out, when they rehydrate with the bone broth, you're gonna have more of an infusion of the flavor. So you can either, we just dice these up and we spread them out even on a baking sheet and we can set them inside our oven because our pilot light goes all the time. Or you can just let them set out on the counter if you're comfortable with that but you do want to make sure that they are dried out. And I'm just going to, now I've started to debone that neck and that's that's not a fun thing to do and I'll, I'll actually, I only did enough so that my mama won't fuss that I didn't do it. And I'll, I'll pull a little bit more of the meat off but honestly the cats are gonna get it. Um, so we've got the breadcrumbs in our pan. We've got the turkey in there. We're gonna add this after it's sauteed down and translucent. And then we're gonna add our broth once it's warm. Now what you wanna do, the, the egg that you're gonna put in, you wanna put it in just as a binder to hold it together. I only use one, some people use two. I don't wanna risk the chance of it tasting eggy, so I don't do that. So in the meantime, I'm gonna take some sage and I'm not gonna give you a specific amount of sage that I use. Everyone's tastes are different. I don't, I like the flavor of sage. I don't want it to be too sagey, but mine is, we dehydrated this ourselves. So it's a little um, denser than what you would get at the grocery store. And anytime you raise and dehydrate your own herbs, these are going to be stronger because the ones at the grocery store do have some fillers. So what I do is I pinch 
a little bit off. Let me just aim you down here. I'm just going to sprinkle over the top some of my sage. And I, I do it by looks. I get just a little bit of a sprinkle kind of everywhere. Because again, I don't like it too sagey, but I do love the flavor of sage. For me, the dressing is the whole reason to have Thanksgiving. All right. So we've got that going. Let's get back over to the stove. You can see I've been canning. I figured while I was in the kitchen, I might as well just keep on canning. And our celery is greening up some. Our onions are starting to get translucent. The smell, I wish it was smell of vision because the smell is just, my husband will come in the house now and ask if dinner's ready. And this is gonna probably take like, I don't know, five, six minutes to get this down where I want it. And sometimes I will actually put a glass lid on top of this so that it self steams. I think we're gonna do that now. That keeps all of your butter from going out. It self steams and makes it cook a little faster. And that's what we're looking for. But one of the key things with dressing is you don't want it to be too dry. So when you heat up this broth, and it's just about to a point where it's starting to, uh, I'm gonna have to get a handle because I left that handle over the other, over the iron skillet. I'm gonna pour this on and then I'm gonna let it sit and let the breadcrumbs actually start to absorb it. Woohoo! Sorry, didn't mean to take you for a ride. We charge extra for rides at this park. My experience has been that it's gonna take the whole pan. So we're just gonna do that. Probably should turn off that burner. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend them. My husband makes them for me and they're super awesome to scrape the bottoms of skillets with. But see, as you can see here, you're still going to see a little bit of water down in the bottom of this, or a little bit of the broth. It's okay. These breadcrumbs are going to absorb this, and it's not going to be wet. It'll take, I usually let this sit for at least a half hour before I bake it off. And we're gonna get these al dente. They're translucent, but they're still a little crisp. And now we are going to pour this, the mixture of all of the, see how, I don't know if you can see or not. This thing just scrapes right across the bottom and you get all the goodness out of there. This smells amazing, kids. Now you could put a little bit of garlic or garlic powder in this. And we usually put garlic in just about everything. We will not be putting it in this. See how a lot of that liquid is starting to go away? And next all we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some of this egg as a binder. This might be a little too warm. You wanna make sure, um, and I didn't do this, and you should, um, make sure it cools off just a little bit before you add the egg so that you don't end up with scrambled eggs. So we'll just mix it fast so that that doesn't happen. And that's it. I'm gonna throw this in the oven at 350 for about 45 minutes. I'm gonna wait till after everything's absorbed to make sure that the liquid is in there. I'm gonna get it a little crispy on top. 
I'm gonna make sure that it's not soupy in the middle. And if I feel like it needs to cook a little more and it's getting a little too crispy on top, I'll just throw a sheet of foil on it. And judging from the looks of this, I am gonna put just a little more sage on. And I do not salt and pepper. Um, one of the things that um, you should know about spices, and this just um, is something I've learned from some of the chefs I've worked with because I've been in food service for so long, is <clears throat> they're always added at the end. You don't wanna add like your salt at the very beginning because it cooks away and you, use that, you lose the actual flavor, but you're still stuck with the sodium in your diet. So it kind of stinks. So what you do is you wait until, and I like a lot of salt and Hubs doesn't, so we're just better off to just salt it on our plates. But that happens with a lot of your spices. So, so just be aware that they do cook away some, and this is really, um, it's, gonna, it's firming up pretty nice. So I'm not too concerned. If your bread was not dried, this would still look like soup because that bread has nowhere to absorb all of that moisture. And that's it. I make mine super simple and super fast. So we're gonna let, again, we're gonna let this sit on the counter for about a half hour um, at least, and then we'll throw it in the oven at 350 until it's done. And friends, I just wanna thank you for your support over the last year. One of the things I am just feeling such thanksgiving for is the way that you have embraced me and watched my videos and um, just the kinship that I've gotten with some of you uh, through comments and through social media. And I just want to know that you are a blessing to me. So until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.